Well, hello there, humans, hippies, earthlings, wherever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too, welcome back to channel. My name is Bushka, and today we're going to be talking about power creep, creeping through the night like a big, dark, bloody gameplay balance burglar, the power creeper. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it with regard, especially to the light tank buffs that were in the most recent patch in Water Tank Splits. Uh, and I want to talk about just how crazy the game is at the moment and how bad some of the balance changes are. Um, and I'm going to use the lens of the SP1C to do that. Because really, it, I looked at the, the actual buffs to the tanks in the Blitz client and I was completely perplexed. There was the, and so I drove the lights, the T71, the SP1C, just to get an idea and, and a feel for how they're doing in the game and what's going on and all that kind of thing. But also because I needed footage to talk over the top of. And that's exactly what I got, lots of footage to talk over the top of. Now, there is a massive problem with the SP1C particularly that this tank, the T71, doesn't suffer from. And that's the shell reload time. Wargaming did two things with the SP1C, really. They buffed mobility... And then they buffed the reload time of the entire magazine. None of that's important. Let's go a little bit back in history here. The SP-1C was the first tier seven light tank really introduced to the game as a tech tree tank. And it was important because lights coming to Blitz was a huge thing. They hadn't existed and they were very, very different tanks. And they dominated, absolutely dominated the meta. And the game was very different back then. The SP-1C was just ferocious. Same old 225 Alpha gun that it has now, the 90mm uh, Mecha Mit... Whatever the hell that word is. Um, and... Yet it had a two-second reload between the clips, uh, which meant that when you fired, you had two seconds after firing from stealth and being invisible for the enemy bad guy to turn around and shoot at you, which was just enough for it to be overpowered because there was no... There was no predators for this tank, for the SP-1C when it came out before. So they've been mucking around with it for ages, the same as they've been mucking around with the grill and the fosh and all that. It's just a too hard basket thing for them, tier seven meds and tier seven lights. Have a look at this. This is from a 2017 video of the SP-1C after it had been nerfed and then slightly buffed. And I mean, you can see mobility is not an issue for this tank. Mobility is absolutely fine. It moves about the place like a freaking jackrabbit. Mobility is not the problem. The problem with the SP-1C is power creep. Since the SP-1C was king of the jungle for a very, very short period of time, the SP-1C has had so many changes to the universe that it lives in. Uh, for one, players are better equipped to deal with the game through their equipment, like the equipment loadouts and things are so much better now. Um, and the gear people have in terms of perks and skills and things are so much better now. And yet the T49 that you can see on the right there didn't exist back then. And you play a lot of tier eight games and that is the most incredible, nasty predator for the SP-1C. You are a walking bucket of blood for a T-49. Number two, let's talk about, um, you know, tanks like the Smasher and, and the Kin. Guys that are just massively overpowered premiums that didn't exist within the game back then. Just massively OP. Um, when, the, when it came out, the Dracula and the Helsing didn't exist. And... That's before we even get to the, the nuts of the problem of things like tier seven heavy buffs, where every tier seven heavy and every tier eight heavy got hit point buffs and armor buffs and tiger peas and, and like, it's freaking ridiculous that that all happens. And then your answer to this tank having issues dealing with the world is to give it more mobility and make the clip reload slightly faster because the problem isn't any of that. It's that the game is just being swallowed alive by freaking power creep. What do I mean by power creep? Well, let's talk about that. Back when this game was the SP-1C's domain, if you wanted to go and roll some win rate up and be a seal clubber playing in an awesome 
uh, two-man platoon. You'd grab your IS6s and you'd go out there and you'd dominate because IS6s had premium matchmaking, which meant they only saw one level above and you would never see Tier 10. Look, imagine taking an IS6 into a Tier 10 battle now. <laughs> well, back in the day, that was a real thing. And that meant the balance was different. Well, those days are gone. Those days are just gone. And the IS-6 is just a very mediocre tank now. Likewise, the T-54 Mod 1. Hell, the Helsing and the Dracula were just stupidly OP when they came out. But now, like, they were some of the best tanks in the entire game. And now they wouldn't even make the top 10. Um, like... I used to seal club in a T-54 Mod 1 because it had incredible armor and no one could pen it angled and it was crazy. These tanks have been left in the dust and you can't balance tanks like the SP-1C when you're introducing new Chinese TDs that are unpenable from the front and have two and a half thousand alpha or a DPM and this is the real issue with World of Tanks Blitz right now. and. The reason we have missile tanks is freaking power creep. It's not just because it's nice. It's because, like, where do you go? Like, the shark has been well and truly jumped. Like, we have laser beams on their heads, and they are in spacesuits going around the moon in f gravity defying flipperware. Like, everything is so good because if it's not good, it won't be able to beat the last thing that was not good. And so you get situations where you get these lip service buffs. Like, look at this thing. Look at this. With heat in front of my little SP-1C. I could just pen the lower glacis, but I can't touch the upper glacis at all frontally. Like, I can't even pen it frontally with heat. And I'm dealing with tanks like that if I'm driving this tank on the daily, on the down low. Now, I mean, I will admit... I was struggling in this game um, because in all these games, really, I've had some very big issues with my <laughs> controls where I've just not been playing enough Blitz. And when I do play, I tried the claw control, but when I play PUBG Mobile, the claw is on the right-hand side for the zoom and it's on the left uh, for, for PUBG Mobile and on the right-hand side for PUBG. And I was just pressing the wrong buttons all the time. So I went back to thumbs because the UI in Blitz is so bloody un usual like there's just no way you can adjust it properly the crazy thing for me is that we're in a place where the top five tanks in game from two years ago <laughs> i mean they're not even in the final now there are so many crazy good tanks running around at tier 10 that just like that have come in and been nerfed. Like the T-22 medium doesn't even get talked about, but you're talking about a T-62A with spaced armor and a pike nose that can reverse side scrape and go hull down. And like, and that's not even <laughs> Sheridans that have game mechanics that no one else in the game has access to. Um, I mean, remember the M60? That was like, it has better aim time and it was broken. People were freaking out because it has better aim time than the M48 pattern. And if you use it in comp, there's an advantage in that. Now we've got missiles. Like, <laughs> I don't know what to do. I don't know what people are thinking. Uh, I mean, WZ121Bs and the Vickers Light and the freaking Badger and the Ho Re, which has this crazy setup where it's. AP round does 560 and it's premium ammo does 545 and a 70 millimeters more pen for 380 millimeters of pen. I just, this stuff is nuts. And we are now in the point where it's just like, it's just so crazy. I don't know where we go from here. Am I going to keep playing the game? Hell yeah. Am I going to play tier 10? Not often. Um, anything that's got a missile in it just triggers me pretty hard and reminds me of how I long for the good old days when you couldn't really pay for power the way you can now. But for all that, let's get back to this update. What What is coming next? Well, we've had total buffs for whole classes across, across tiers. Like... 
all tier eight heavies and all tier seven heavies and stuff getting buffed. How crazy does that sound? That you're in a game where a whole class of vehicle has to get buffed just to make it relevant or make it playable to the degree that it should be. Where tanks that were the Tyrannosaurus Rexes of the universe, like <laughs> like the good old T-50 Mod, Mod 1 or the IS-6 are now just the also rands of mediocrity. And they cost 70 bucks when they came out. Like we all paid our money for them. Now that you wouldn't drive an IS-6 if you got paid. Like why would you bother when there's just so many other good tanks that you can drive that'll just take a huge steaming dump all over the top of it. I don't know, man. I don't know what's going on. I don't know how we get out of here, but I hope the guys who are in charge of balance have some kind of a clue because they've never listened to me and I doubt very much when they'll start listening to me now. Um, you know, what are you going to do? What are, what are we going to do? Um, we're going to play our tanks. We're going to play the ones we enjoy. We're going to play with our mates. And we're going to have fun. And I'm going to do replay streams. And then uh, and we'll work on it from there. It just, just whatever. Until next time, look after yourselves and stay safe on the battlefield. Bye for now.